it is difficult for me to follow, you know, the sessions which was presented earlier, you know, by somewhat, someone with long academic years of experience, you know, so practical experience. But I will try to walk you or take you to Afghanistan for the next 15 minutes. We will try to show you how the health system is working here. I was supposed to present something else in the beginning. I was trying to present one of the, our local innovation for the health system. But last night during the discussion with the other panel members, I understood that, well, there is nobody from Afghanistan. Let's discuss about the health system of Afghanistan, especially the primary health care. And what is our future plan for the primary health care and how, we are, how much we are successful in what are the challenges. I am sure you may know about Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a unique country. <laughs> and, well, Afghanistan is a unique country in different sense. In terms of conflict, 50% of the country is controlled by the government, 50% by others. Second thing, our health system is managed somehow by the implemented partners. So we have non-governmental organization. They are implementing the services. The government people is just trying to make sure that they are doing their job. So somehow we are in comfort zone, you know, because other people are doing our job. And also the NGO is responsible also to provide some, to, to answer some question of the community. So that's, and other things that 75% we are dependent on foreign aid. So in fact, when there is no foreign aid, I don't know what will happen in the health, health system. And we don't have proper answer to, for that. Out of pocket expenditure, despite of 75% of foreign aid, is also 73% or 4%. 50% of the Afghans are living under poverty line. So like, imagine, you know, some of the data that I'm presenting, and the reason that why I'm trying to take you to Afghanistan, because the situation is totally different. Despite of those foreign aid, out of pocket expenditures, and then poverty, so many people are going abroad for treatment, they are selling their property, also they are selling, borrowing money from people, so how much they are also under stress, and what is the barrier also for the health service provision in this country. And the last thing I am also trying, so out of the health budget, when we come to the health expenditures, uh, cost per capita is around five and six dollars. It is only managed by the government. We have two kinds of budget in Afghanistan. One is, one is budget on and one is budget off. So budget on means, so donor is providing you know, the budget, funding you know, the health system, and government is spending that one. It is budget on. Budget off is while the government is directly spending budget through the implementers, and sometimes we don't know about the exact figures. So fifth, it's also like five and six dollars the same. So totally it's like eleven or ten dollars between ten and eleven cost per cost per capita for the population. So we have three big donors. I don't want to take to talk about that one. Ministry of Public Health is just trying, as I mentioned, you know, to manage you know, the contract, procurement, and also other things. And one other thing I was just reviewing now, inequalities in Afghanistan is totally different in the world. So in the capitals, the mortality, maternal mortality is 400, while in one of the provinces where I was working for some time, it is 600, 500. I was just checking that on the data. I thought maybe I'm confused with the data. 6,500 mothers are dying from the preventable disease, preventable during the pregnancies, uh, out of 100,000 population. And then in the capital, it's 400. I don't want to talk about other indicators. So in 2003, for the first time, when we started you know, these health service provisions with the new government after Taliban collapse, so we developed BPHS and EPHS, basic package of health services in 2003, and essential package of hospital services later in 2005. In 2003, we were only focusing on the primary health care. And after two years, we found that people were not coming to our health facility. They thought, well, you are only providing basic services. We don't have hospital services. And if we need some services, you cannot refer us to the private one. In the government, you don't have you know, the policy and strategy. And donors were also not very happy to fund you know, the hospital services because the existing policy was very old. And we, don't, we were not able to revise or develop a new policy for the hospital services. That's why in 2005, we developed essential package of hospital services as a kind of backup for the EPA, for the basic package of health services for the primary health care to refer the cases when they need, you know, further treatment. 
the element of the BPHS was mental health, disabilities, control of communicable disease, immunization, child health and uh, maternal health and child health, child health and supply of uh, provision of quality of medicine. So these were the uh, main component of the BPHS and we were only focusing on that one. The, I will also talk about the health indicators. So the health indicators, like under five maternal mortality, child mortality was 250 in thousand. And maternal mortality I talk, and average we were saying that it is 1,600, you know, in 100, in 100,000 populations, and 100,000 live births. And under one, it was 156. And uh, under five was that one, newborn world, it was very complicated things. Then when we implemented the basic package of health services, an essential package of health services, for at least for 10 years, up to 2013. So there was a significant improvement in the health service system. Maternal mortality was reduced, and nationally from this, in average it was 16,000, you know, 1,600, it reduced to 327. Child mortality under five reduced from, 2000, from 256 to 50. So I will not talk about the other process indicator. These were the main indicators. But later, after 2015, we were not able to see a significant improvement in the health system because the vehicle that we were using for 10 years, it was working very well. And later, because it was some kind of international experience things, it was not local context solution. It was not working properly up to 2000, up for the, next, for the last five years. Then what we have done, we started to think about the new innovations in the health system. And we, what we, new system, because we, integrate, we did a kind of assessment in the country level, we found a kind of new emerging, emerging problem. For example, average life expectancy was in 2003, it was 42. In 2012, when we did, in 11, it was 64. We found out that, well, there will be non-communicable diseases. In 2003, we were thinking Afghanistan is safe, and there is no, you know, Al-Qaeda and others. We will be having, we will have very safe Afghanistan. So emergency, trauma, they were not as a priority for the health system. But unfortunately, in 2012, almost 50 percent of the Length was controlled by others. Daily people were dying also in suicide attack, explosions. So trauma was one of the uh, important priority also as a big challenge also for the country. Non-communicable diseases because life expectancy is increased. And then some communicable diseases, HIV. In 2003, we had only 200 <coughs> HIV cases. Today we have 10,000 HIV cases, estimated cases HIV. And out of 10,000, uh, we were only able to detect HIV cases 2,500. And out of 2,500, only 800 is under treatment. So imagine if HIV case is not under treatment and you just left it without any kind of measure preventive <coughs> preventions, so it can spread very easily. So that's why we thought maybe the existing policy needs to just revise it totally, and we started integrated package of health services. Integrated package of health services were part of the services that we had in BPHS, part of the services that we have in uh, EPHS and hospital services, and then we also brought some new innovation, some new problems, you know, that we noticed that one during the last 10 years, 17 years, you know, from starting from 2003 up to 2008. And what we have done, we develop, develop integrated package. In integrated package, the problem also, other problem that we have in EPHS, in BPHS, we were only focusing on health service provision. We forgot to consider, you know, communities when they are living a bit far about their preventive measure and also health promotion. And other things, intersectoral collaboration. In many developing countries, including Pakistan, including India, <coughs> we have colleagues from India, so, Health system is sometimes not very successful because they are only providing, you know, the services. Nobody is thinking about health promotion. Nobody is thinking about other preventive measures to include other line ministry. For example, in Afghanistan, we have Ministry of Women Affairs. So if we don't work properly with the Ministry of Women Affairs, then we may not be able to directly improve, you know, the maternal, maternal health. It's again also for the Ministry of Education. If we don't focus on literacy rate, 
with the lowest literacy rate, even if we increase, you know, all the supply, people will not be able to come to use, you know, the services. So that's why with the new policy, we, have, we are also focusing on intersectoral collaboration. We are focusing on emergency because it's conflict and also communicable disease. So these are the main priority. And we, for the new policy, we have been also working with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. So to see if we are also properly also applying, you know, some of the innovations based on the international experience, feasible in the country, cost effective and also cost efficient. We are also thinking to reduce, you know, this inequality plus efficiency is also something because without efficiency we will not be able to improve to reduce the cost so these are the reasons that why we included several international partners and in policy development but things come from the ground and one of the important things that we also included in the current policy it is local context solution and i was trying to talk about some of the local context solution i think i, I will not have enough time one is one dollar project with one dollar project i will share the link with colleagues, we were able to save the life of one mothers. How just it was community engagement, community involvement, and we were trying, you know, to increase also demand because supply is there. In many developing countries, sometimes they have unspent budget in the health system, including neighboring countries and also Afghanistan. We are only 60% spending the health budget, 50% is remaining, while mortality and morbidity is very high because we don't have demand and it's only supply. So if you have supply and people don't use it, so it's under utilization of those services and sometimes we need to close our health facility to make it more, more, more like effective and efficient. So if you don't have, you know, the supply side. Uh, so I talk at the, about the, this slide, I think that was covered. So what, we less, what was our lesson learned and what we have message also today uh, like one of the developing countries. So our lesson learned is community engagement. Unfortunately, in many developing countries, when donor is funding, the budget is, it is ca kind of conditional budget. If we follow the international rule, we will be able to get the fund from the international donors. If not, then we may not be able to do it. So that's why local communities somehow neglected. I remember we had a project, one project, they were focusing on HIV, the other pro project was focusing on TB, the third one was focusing on malaria. It was not well integrated. So if health system is not integrated, then 75% we are dependent on foreign aid for the future, we may also get to 90% because people are not well, well, uh, so the last thing, health system was also somehow, still it is one of the biggest challenge that we have, it is fragmented because several partners in several provinces, so these partners, different partners in different provinces, they are, it's difficult to bring them together because sometimes they got pro project directly from Geneva. Even the government of Afghanistan is not in the picture, then how they could be accountable to us. So that's, that will be something, you know, that we, we want to discuss it in our meeting also with the donors. So I think, uh, how many minutes I got? <laughs> Two minutes? Okay. So have, I, I, I'm worried about the time. So other things that we, we are just trying, you know, to, to, to discuss, it is also health workforce. In Afghanistan, health work, brain drain is very high because of those conflict in the country. When we send people abroad, then female health workers, people talk about these female, you know, ratios. So despite of those community nursing, community midwifery program, so we are still able to have, you know, at, at least in 80% of the health facility, we have one female health worker. So now imagine if maternal mortality is very high and you don't have midwife and you don't have nobody in that context where people are not happy to receive your services for, for the male. So don't, then sometimes this dream will be very difficult to come to the reality because you don't have, you know, that scale in the, in the ground. And so the only option for us is now to involve also private sector to train more staff and then quality will be sometime under questions because if you let all the private sectors also to train midwife and then you cannot control you know their capacity then the quality of those train the quality of those midwife when they completed their training will not be able to quality services private sector in afghanistan the other important things that we have 70% like 75 i mentioned so uh, it's out of pocket expenditures. It means most of the people, they are going to the private sector to receive the services. <coughs> While at the Ministry of Public Health, seven people, seven people are just controlling 
private sectors who provide 75% of the health services. While 25% of the services provided by the government, we have 40,000, 14,000 staff for that one. So this is again a challenge that we have with the donors, because donor is not very happy to support you know, this low, the private sector side. So they are saying, well, it is kind of development of the country. Let the private sector also to provide some services. It is good, but that's why we have something in the ground. But it's difficult also to use them and to, uh, to make sure that they are providing you know, quality services. Uh, thank you very much.